What are national human rights institutions? National human rights institutions, NHRIs, are independent state bodies with a constitutional and or legislative mandate to protect, monitor and promote human rights in a given country. National human rights institutions take many forms and have different names depending on the region. For example, Human Rights Commission, Ombudsman, Public Defender, Public Protector, Human Rights Institute, etc. Because of their importance, NHRIs serve two main functions according to the United Nations Paris Principles. Human Rights Promotion Creating a national culture of human rights where tolerance and equality thrive and an enabling environment for human rights is created. Human Rights Protection Helping to identify and investigate human rights abuses, seek justice and redress for victims of human rights violations and advice on remedies for redress. The main criteria that an NHRI should meet in order to be successful as set out in the Paris Principles are Independence Autonomy from government Competence Adequate resources Adequate powers of investigation Pluralism Meaning that the governing body of the NHRI should represent different segments of society. In the context of HIV in Africa, NHRIs can be instrumental in challenging and monitoring the following issues. HIV criminalization, which describes the unjust use of the criminal, civil, administrative and or public health laws to punish and control the behaviour of people living with HIV based on their HIV status. 30 sub-Saharan African countries have enacted broad and or vague HIV-specific punitive criminal statutes. TB criminalization, which describes responses to tuberculosis, TB, that fail to respect human rights and apply overly broad punitive approaches to persons with TB. For example, enforcing involuntary treatment, isolation and detention in prisons, home arrests and travel restrictions. Criminalization of key populations. Almost all African countries criminalize the behavior and identities of key populations, including sex workers, lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender persons, and people who use drugs. Many key populations are more vulnerable to criminal laws as they experience double discrimination, for example, on both the basis of HIV status and status as a sex worker. NHRIs should also promote laws and programs that enable availability and access to services that support healthy sexuality and reproduction, such as services to help women plan their families, access to preconception support, and access contraception. NHRIs must also promote the enactment of laws that prevent early marriage, forced marriage, and gender-based violence, as well as ensuring that national strategies include efficient mechanisms to prevent, investigate and punish violence against women and girls. National Human Rights Institutions, NHRIs, have a significant role to play in creating an enabling legal environment that strengthens access to HIV and TB prevention, treatment, care, as well as sexual reproductive health and rights services. CSOs can support NHRIs to better fulfill their duties by providing guidance and support to NHRIs to ensure that programs, investigations and reports are evidence-informed and reflect the lived realities of key populations. Sensitizing commissioners and staff members to ensure that the institution is sensitive to the issues being dealt with, such as to key and marginalised population issues. Working with media to ensure that the public is constantly informed of the work that the NHRIs undertake in-country. Supporting NHRIs to speak out against human violations that members of key populations, people living with HIV, people with TB, women and girls face. Join our efforts to enhance collaboration with NHRIs and to call for independent human rights institutions. For more information, please visit www.arasa.info and www.na.org.
nhri.org.